Hey, welcome back. So in this one, I want to show you how to map distance and perspective three different ways. So uh, just to get it started, I'm going to put a horizon line across the top here. Make that a bit larger so you can see it more clearly. All right, so we're going to pick a vanishing point, And we'll just say right about here. That's kind of hard to see as well, isn't it? Let's pick a red. So the reason why... Uh, this particular series of um, techniques is so important. Uh, I find for myself anyways that if I don't do this, I tend to skew the work uh, perspectively quite a bit. It's generally hard for me to tell you know, exactly how much distance I might want to cover for a series of windows or columns or pillars or whatever it is I might be drawn. But um, So in this case, what I'll do is I'll just draw a couple perspective lines out from the vanishing point the other lines will be vertical and so this is obviously a one point perspective and really the shape is you know this this is just a flat plane at this point but as soon as we were to make it into a shape or a, you know 3d prism we would need a second vanishing point so keep that in mind if anything was going to go back there you would find another point on the horizon and convert this to a two point perspective uh, okay, so now let's go ahead and just work off just this area. So the, there's a few different ways to go about this, and I'll show you the probably the simplest method first. So one of which is you just basically divide up the side of your object or plane uh, into the amount of segments that you want. Okay, so we'll say something like this. I'm just picking a random size and copying it so this is you know same concept as even using a ruler i'm just basically mimicking that effect by making these little hash marks and copying them down uh, one thing i will say about techniques like these is generally you want to make sure that whatever you end up with whether it be a spacing or uh, you know, maybe you have two little marks you, you just want to end up the same way you left off so you could e either use gaps on the end or marks but uh, make sure the same distance is equal to each side. Um, I know that probably goes without saying, but I figured I'd throw it in there. So now what we do is we take this point. Let me get a little closer here for you. So we take this point and we go back to the vanishing point, just like this. And so whatever divides we make here are, you know, obviously evenly spaced out horizontally. And so you can move those marks around and really experiment with this. But then the trick of it is, as soon as you cross over diagonally, I'll use a different color, and I just want to make this super easy to understand. So each one of these are steps, basically. And then from this point, you could go to finalize your uh, segmentation. So remember, the goal was to divide it up um, vertically. So from here, we would just do uh, vertical lines, right? up like that and I'll just copy these to expedite it but you know it's, it's the same concept of you pulling a ruler right to these areas drawing a vertical line upward and just like that we end up with uh, even divides now in, in both ways uh, so you could say well uh, I just wanted the vertical lines and in which case you would get rid of actually let me combine these together So you know, if you just wanted the verticals, you'd go like that. But those are evenly spaced out uh, in distance. And I'll show you another way to check that, which is actually another way to go about it, um, is subdividing these areas. So for instance, to check this, we could take this and say, okay, let's make sure that these are uh, landing where we hope they are, or we expect them to be. And what we'll do for that is we're going to first subdivide one of these like this we got to grab a line right up the uh, center there and then working back from our vanishing point we're going to go right through center here so now what's happened is we've subdivided that into four sections four quadrants and we've also given ourselves a reference point to carry that over into perspective so this is, this is really the most common method 
for um, dividing something, but the only difference is if you divide here, you only get multiples of two. And if you measure back from here, so you take this corner to this center till it aligns to that next orthogonal line or perspective line. And you can keep doing that corner to center, corner to center. But see how we're able to basically check this and, and you see it's lining up pretty good. Uh, I'm not saying every line will hit exactly where it is, uh, quite frankly, because I'm using pretty thick lines here and I'm probably going a little bit too fast for you know precision or whatever, but, but you see it lined up pretty good. And that's essentially, again, another way to map and mirror. That's not one of the ones I'm gonna show you though. So basically this one, just remember, this, re this basically relies on making the measurements off to the left, using a vanishing point to bring those lines back, then drawing a diagonal line through the middle, and then vertical lines through where it intersects at these points and that will give you divides in really both directions. So if you, the other way to look at it is if you did get rid of that blue diagonal line, these are all miniature versions of this bigger shape. So it's perfectly subdivided. So again, this is a really great one. Uh, I don't use this as much for windows, but you really could. I mean, once you have all these registration marks, you could draw, uh, draw all sorts of things. But I'll show you what I think is a superior method for windows and column placement um, soon. So let's go ahead and go to the next one. Okay, so we've got our uh, diagonal one covered. So now uh, the next one is going to be uh, one I've shown on the channel here before, but I think it confused people a little bit. So I'm going to try to explain it again, hopefully a little bit better. Uh, but the same basic diagram of a one point perspective. But on this one, we're going to draw a line out to the side. And we're going to put our units of measurement here. Remember, these can be really whatever you think they need to be. Um, but in this particular one, I am going to add a spacer, okay? So I would take something like, well, actually I would need to start down here, or even like this, I guess wouldn't, wouldn't matter, but I'll add the divide right here first. I'll move this over and I'll create, basically what I'm figuring is the first spacer, which I could probably extend that further, uh, and then the gap for a window and then another divide okay and again these could really be bigger you can play around with these and make any variations of the sort and then I will overlap these as I mirror them down and we'll get it to about probably right there we'll try that out so this to me this method is a little bit more superior you know I don't even know that superior is the right word let's just say that they all serve their purpose at different intervals. Like you just start to realize all the different aspects of where you could utilize these techniques. The main thing is that you practice them, you learn them, you, you put them in your, your mental toolbox because they are very effective. So what I'm gonna do here is carry from this corner. So it's very, you know, I'm not using the top part of these lines. I'm looking for the intersection that relates to the bottom of the line. Just to, you know what, just to make it easier for you to read. I'm going to really, because I, I just don't want to confuse anybody, I'm going to cut those down even further because, again, I'm just looking for the intersecting points at the very bottom. But I'm going to go from this bottom corner through this corner back to the horizon line. So I'm referencing those two points back to the horizon line to find basically another vanishing point. I'll then reference that back to this, again, the bottom edge of these points, not the tip up here, but the bottom uh, intersection of these points right there and what this is doing and, and this I don't know man, it just always amazes me how cool perspective uh, techniques are it's relating these divides back to that flat plane in perspective so it takes a little bit of setup to do this stuff and the last one I'll show you takes a little bit more work but it's actually the most um, to me it's it's the most useful but these are all just cool to know. I mean, at any given time, uh, if you practice them enough, you should be able to recognize when they would uh, be needed in your work, hopefully. So I'll now add another layer on top and I'll just run vertical lines from these points. So remember, I've got my divide there. I've got a spacer for a window, a column, a whatever design. I mean, it doesn't have to apply to buildings. I just 
I've been drawing a lot of buildings lately, so it's what's on my mind. Uh, but anything where you need these patterns spaced out in perspective. Uh, and plus, you you got to remember too, you combine these with the other techniques. So like I might take something like this, I'm like, okay, I've got this uh, these vertical segmentations with these divides that I need. But you know what, now I need these subdivided. So I start crisscrossing diagonal corner, I make diagonal lines from corner to corner, find center along with the perspective. And again, it just gives me more and more reference points and I can work into these areas multiple times with that. Uh, so again, here's another way to subdivide uh, these areas uh, in perspective. So let's move on to the third example. All right, so now for the one that's a little bit more complex, but I find myself using the most. Uh, so here we go. It's basically, you know, along the same idea, I guess. So we're going to take this area and instead of doing even subdivisions or even segmentations uh, or, or gaps throughout, uh, I want to mirror uh, the patterns. But what it allows me to do is take these these different areas and put the windows uh where I want them, you know, and get, again, I'm just saying windows, it could be anything, but uh, I'll just show you what I mean. So uh, I'm going to start with a shape that I want to see on this. And I'm going to say, okay, I want the opening for a window about here, uh, but I don't want the next window to be directly across from it. And I also don't want, you know, window space, window space, window space, or I would use the other technique in this instance. Uh, but what I do want is I want the ability to just kind of mirror these uh, divides over. Uh, and then I want to be able to use these, you know, uh, basically wherever I want. So I'll just show you. So this is the pattern that I want, but I now want to mirror it over to here. And I want to be able to continue that on. Um, so let me show you how I do that. So I'd first take and subdivide the area and find center. Okay, so again, diagonal, corner to corner, vertical line, and line from the perspective point or vanishing point through the middle. And once you have the center line, you can really divide these up uh, much quicker. So what I'm going to do is actually just keep what we, what we need here. And I'm going to tone this back and show you what I mean. So with this next step, I'm just going to take and go from the corner through the center like that and I can I can mimic this uh, this uh, first plane over to here but but notice I've already got a segmentation here so really what's happening is this area is mimicked from here to here I shouldn't say mimic this drawn in perspective um, but see that's what it is but because of this divide it looks off so what do I do there well I first mirror my spacer and to do that corner to center to the perspective line. And so now I've got that in place. And then to get both of these over there, I have to go, I have to treat the entire thing as a whole. So just remember, if I go from corner to center, I'm basically looking at, let me go around it because you can't really see it the way I've got it laid out. I'm basically utilizing this whole shape right here and, and pushing that over. But I, since I've already created the mirrored version of the middle piece it will now give me this line way over here where i need it so let me show you corner to center of the entire um, two shapes but i'm thinking of it as one and that now gives me the reference point for that next line so let me tone that back and clean it up for you and where's the you know, just make sure it's on the very top okay so now we can trace this out Oh, I went too far, forgive me. Gotta go back right to here. Vertical line here. Perspective line here. And vertical line there. And there we go. So now we're able to map out this pattern and you can continue that on. So a tricky part might uh, be for some of you, and, and I know I was tricked by this at first. It's like, okay, well I wanna flip that again, but how do I get this piece over to here because I need to restart my, my spacers, right? And, and let me get rid of that uh, teal line because I feel like that one's a little distracting at this point. And I don't want to distract anybody because I know this is a 
can be a tough one to grasp. So we'll get rid of this tail line so it's not distracting anybody. We just need our verticals. And I'll leave that center line for the, the pink at this point, and the magenta right there. Okay, so again, how do we get this one over to here? Okay, so what we do there, or you know, one, one of the ways that I found, I guess, is that we think about this shape over here already being uh, divided. So if we divide this, or you know, not even if we divide it, if we think about it already being divided, okay? So just imagine that we had already segmented that and created our center here and we mirrored it over and made this new copy, right? Well, at that point, this area and this area would now give us the next line, just like it did previously. And this is where it probably gets a little confusing. So I, I guess the thing is just, if you're not getting what I'm saying here, just follow along, but I can tell you it does work. So whenever you have a shape to the opposite side that you need to bring over, all you're gonna do is divide the middle. Uh, and I know some of you are probably like, well, yes, duh, that's easy. But again, it threw me for a loop and I'm imagining it, but probably mess up a couple of it. So let's go back and do this in action and, and hopefully it'll make sense for those of you that may not be following along like, like I did. Okay, so um, again, we're going to subdivide this area like this. Create our divide up the middle. We're gonna to tone that back because it's not really what we're after. We, I mean, we, we do want the center line, but that's we just want it for reference. So again, just imagine that this area right here is actually just a pre-mirrored copy of this that we already did. And we're gonna go from this bottom left through the middle here, and then mapping that over to here, drop this line down. While we're here, might as well go from the corner here through the middle, drop this line down. And now we've recreated the two spacers here. So let me clean that up and show you. Again, if nothing else, you just practice it over and over until it starts to make sense. Uh, but it's, again, it's very repeatable and uh, it gets, you know, it gets faster and easier the more you do it. Okay, and then finally, I want to put this shape over there again. I want to end up with what we started. So again, that's pretty easy to do now that we know the, you know, the techniques here. So if we go back and say, Okay, so how do we get this shape over there? Well, we ignore this and we go from here to the center of here. Right about there. And that will give us that next shape in perspective. Now, it looks pretty skinny, right? It's, it's going to because this is actually a kind of steep perspective. Um, let me see if I, of course, I had to put that on. Another layer. So let me fix that real quick, right here to here, here to here, right to there. Uh, and, you know, whenever possible, check the work. So to check the work in this instance, if we're trying to see if, uh, let's see, all right, so the first three shapes, this shape, the two skinny ones, are they even to this one and the two skinny ones next to it, the two dividers? Well, to check that, we would go from this corner through the middle of this, and there we go. See that, and, and same thing. So you can always go corner to center, and you can check, I guess not in this case, because you would have to check, you know, you'd have to check here, corner to center, see that? So you can work back and, and double check your work. Now one last thing, and I'll bring this one to a close. I know it's a long one, but this stuff is just, it can be pretty intense, but uh, uh, it's, it's so, powerful once you get the hang of it so i recommend you try it and i've got a course you know that teaches a lot more of this stuff in depth and uh you know you can check that out in the links below if you like uh, i definitely appreciate the support so we've got these shapes now and so now we want to map these down okay and what i'm going to do first is create a divide because again i like i like having spacers uh in my work and that's uh that's what i'm doing here i'm going to create a little space divide here like so now in this instance I'm gonna carry it down so really I need to reference this area here I need the centers going this way so I'll show you what I mean 
corner to corner, vertical center, and I'll go ahead and bring that all the way up to here. So I'll just need the center point of this one. So now what I'm doing, since I'm working down, I'm going to reference, let me just show you with another color here, corner to center, first through the entire shape, which will give me a, a divide at the base of it. Um, or we'll actually, we'll actually flip it for me, so I'll show you what I mean. So corner to center right there, right? And then corner to center here. So it's giving me two points of reference, right? And those two points of reference are, again, the flipped uh, divider. Let me go ahead and get this going. Oh, you know what? I'm going to need to reference the side here. Bring this up. So this gives me the divider, and these two need to converge so I have that point. So a lot of times you have to really pull this line through the middle. You know, it can go pretty far. So all the way down to here, and back up to the vanishing point, and then bring this line down. And, and you, you'll see it looks funny for a second. It looks like, oh, you went way too far. Um, if anything, this point does look too far so let's see what happened there we've got corner to center oh I think I almost drug that on the wrong angle let me fix that yeah that's better so now let's clean this up and I'll double check it because it could be a little off you just never know and I am kind of using thicker lines so that you can see it better on your screen but uh, you have to be aware of that that sometimes it's better to use nice thin lines really zeroing on these points okay so again going corner to center, or you know, I'm gonna trace it out first. So I'm gonna bring this line down, down here. There's our perspective line. And remember it was the more narrow version. Um, and then, yeah, so now I feel like that's a lot more accurate. Another way to check it would be the opposite way, corner to center this way, and it should still line up. I don't have that reference point right in the middle, but you see that it's it's basically this line, and then you go corner to center here, corner to center here. All right, we'll go through this one. We go all the way down. Where is it? Right there. Yeah. So again, I'm, my lines are a little off when I pull them, but there we go. That's that's correct. So. Now, to map it back this way and finish it out, it actually becomes pretty easy at that point. So we get rid of these. I'll add a new layer just to make sure. And actually, let me add one more color. We'll wrap this thing up. So all the way to here. Let's see how we now have these reference points to really speed things up. And I would actually, I'll just drop through it, I guess. We know that those are divides or spacers or whatever you want to call them. And that now gives us our divides. So I'll go ahead and clean these up and show you the final results. So there you have it. That's three different ways to divide up your areas uh, in perspective. Hopefully these were informative and easy to understand. I would love to know if you have any questions and what else you'd like to see in the future. So good luck with your art and bye for now.